many of your websites are going to have a front end. You may be surprised that I didn't say all, but you're definitely able and encouraged to create API backend applications with Express.js. For example, you may create a native mobile app that simply needs a server-based backend. But in practice, you're usually going to have a web-based front end, which includes some HTML, styles, and probably front end JavaScript. In this video, we'll be digging in a little deeper into the Jade template engine. This is a server-side rendered template engine that creates plain old HTML pages that can be viewed by any device, even if that device doesn't have JavaScript enabled. When I first used Jade, I didn't like it. I was used to HTML, but I forced myself to explore and see how it worked. When I was done, I looked at my code and was amazed at how easy it was to read. Like Python and CoffeeScript, and as we'll see soon, Stylus, Jade uses indentation to note nesting. Therefore, there are no closing tags to keep track of. You can see from this moderately complex document that the markup takes very little vertical space, and the indentation helps you visually group elements together. Of course, with standard HTML, you can do this too, but the difference is in Jade, you must do it, and therefore your code has to be tidy in order to work. It's not hard to find an editor that understands HTML, and while you don't need to have Jade support specifically enabled for your editor, it can be helpful. In this tutorial, I'll be using the Jade plugin for Sublime, and I've also used the Jade support for WebStorm with great success. Vim also has Jade configuration options. When enabled, these plugins will use more intelligent indenting and syntax coloring. Regardless of what editor you use, make sure that your indentation is consistent. Jade doesn't care if you use tabs or spaces, nor if you use two spaces or four, but you have to pick one setting and be consistent in the same file. I'd suggest creating a standard for your team and implementing it consistently. In the Jade community, I've commonly seen two spaces used. Here is one of the simplest HTML docs you can imagine. It has an HTML5 doc type, a head section with a title and a linked style sheet, and a body that contains a headline and a paragraph. You'll notice that the nesting is clear due to the indentation. The title tag is nested under the head, which is nested under the HTML. Sometimes you need to add an attribute. For example, an A tag will have an href attribute. In this case, see the link style sheet tag here? It has two attributes, the rel and href. To create these attributes, we simply need to use parentheses and then separate the attributes with commas. You often need to use IDs and classes to make styling easier. In the case of IDs, we use the CSS style of notation and include a hash directly after the tag name. For example, h1 hash page title. For classes, use the CSS dot notation. For example, p dot hero. You can have multiple CSS classes by using multiple dots. For example, p dot hero dot grid 12. You'll often find that many of the web pages in your site use the same outer shell and only the inner portion of the pages change. In times like this, you'll want to use the extends keyword. You create a layout, which is just a standard Jade file but it will contain a block that has a name. In this case, our block's name is content. You can have multiple blocks if you like. For example, a blog might have a content block and a comments block. Then in your template, you use the word extends at the top of the document to indicate you want to extend another template. In this case, we'll extend layout. Then we use the block document again to indicate the content we want in the block. Nested in the block, we just use normal Jade syntax. In some cases, you may have some markup that gets used in multiple places. Don't repeat yourself, use includes. These are bits of code that are stored in a separate file. Whenever you want that content to appear, you simply include it and it will appear. You'll probably want to use some dynamic data. For example, a blog app will fetch the details about an article and pass the article information to Jade to display it properly. If we look at our route, you'll notice the res.render function takes two options. The first is the name of the template to use, in this case, index, and the second option is an object that gets passed in. Right now, we only have one element of information, the title. We can add as many as we want. Here, we'll add a value for the headline. Now, when we switch back to Jade, we use the equal sign after a tag name if the entire contents of the tag will be the value of the variable. In this case, the h1 will be the title. If you want to include a bit of data inside some other content, then we'll use the hash curly bracket syntax. In this syntax, we add the variable to the paragraph. Every once in a while, you'll have some code that doesn't work right. One way to make debugging easier is to just turn off code you may suspect is causing a problem. You can do this by commenting code. You can comment out one line of Jade using the same syntax as JavaScript. If you comment this way, the commented code will not be visible in the resulting HTML source. You can also comment code by nesting some code under a comment tag like this. This lets you comment out multiple lines pretty easily, but the Jade code will be visible as an HTML comment in the output. Sometimes you want to do different things depending on the data that gets passed in. 
For example, if there is a name, then display it. You can use the if else syntax like this if, name, else, etc. If you want to do the opposite, Jade also has an unless statement. This causes the code to appear as long as a variable is false. In my opinion, our template should be as simple as possible. That means we should not use complex logic. Logic should be in your JavaScript, not in your template. If you need conditionals more complicated than if something exists, then you need to rethink how you're passing your data through. In computer science, this is called separation of concerns. Templates are concerned with displaying data. Processing that data should be done in a route or module. Sometimes we need to do something multiple times. For example, for each item in a list, we need to display a bullet point. This is called iteration, and we'll use Jade's each command. Since JavaScript has two kinds of lists, arrays and objects, there are two ways to use each. The first way simply says each item in list, in which case item is a new variable available in the following nested code. Notice like the if statement, you can quickly tell which code is part of the each block because it's indented. If we want to iterate over an object, we can do the same thing, but we may care about the key. If we edit our route, we can add an object to the data passed through the template. Then we use each item comma key in object. In this case, item is the value, and key is the name the value is assigned to. If we use this syntax on an array, then we'd get numbers. Sometimes you'll bump into errors when writing your Jade templates. The most common relate to indentation. This can be manifested in incorrect HTML, or if you really mess up the indentation, you may get a Jade compilation error. If your editor has a mode that shows you whitespace characters, try to turn it on. In this mode, spaces and tab characters will look different, and you can identify code that is indented improperly. Another great way to have a problem on tags with multiple attributes is to forget the comma between attributes. In any case, your browser should provide details about the error, including a line number. The line number may be off, but it's usually close. So if it says line 9, also check lines 8 and 10 as well. Now you should have a good overview of Jade. You'll be able to build many of your common tasks and use both static and dynamic HTML. There's more to learn, and we'll build on this knowledge as we start to build our project in upcoming sections. Next up, let's discuss the Stylus CSS preprocessor.